Thank you for plugging into this Family Life News podcast, streaming issues-driven, family-focused news. And welcome back to another edition of Capital Connection. Fridays during the Noon Report, we give you direct connection to what's happening in Albany and Harrisburg with the experts on the issues at the state capitals. They are Jason McGuire of New Yorkers for Constitutional Freedoms and Michael Gear at the Pennsylvania Family Institute. Gentlemen, eight years now, we've been doing this program back by popular demand, as they say. Jason, let's begin with you. Here we are just over 50 days to go before the election, and those mail-in ballots seem to be on everybody's minds. Will they delay the results? Huge question mark. There's so much at stake in this election. Uh, Maybe you can just start by explaining the difference between a mail-in ballot and an absentee ballot and what some of your concerns might be. Yeah, maybe it's best to look at the three new laws that Governor Cuomo recently uh, signed into law. And the first new law, which we opposed, allows registered New York voters to request absentee ballots if they're concerned about contracting a communicable disease by voting in person. Now, this has been billed as the COVID clause, but it's really uh, the common cold clause. If you think you could get something by going to the polls, then you can simply request a ballot. Hmm. And so it's going to be very broadly used this year, and we do have concerns about that. The second new law gives voters seven additional weeks to cast the absentee ballots, while the third allows absentee ballots to be counted if they are postmarked on or before Election Day are received seven days after Election Day, or if they lack the dated postmark, but are delivered on the day after Election Day. So this really is a broadening of uh, the mail-in voting, if you will, in New York State. And there are some legitimate concerns concerning the safety of the process. Yeah, and again, some folks are wondering, will it be days, weeks, months maybe? God forbid, uh, before we we have a clear-cut winner, not just the presidential race, but so many other races. Michael, your state, I was uh, blown away when I found this out. Your state, Pennsylvania, is one of just seven states where by law, they can't even start counting those mail-in ballots until Election Day. Uh, Former Governor Tom Ridge wants to change that law. What are some of your concerns as we get ready for the first ever presidential election uh, smack dab in the middle of a pandemic? Well, I think uh, Tom Ridge is rightly concerned about that uh, provision in the law. It made sense when that provision was there just for absentee ballots. But like New York, Pennsylvania expanded absentee ballots to allow for mail-in ballots for those who request them for no reason. They don't even have to say they have a cold or COVID. And then to have such an onslaught of ballots to only be counted on Election Day means a significant delay. And if everyone remembers the 2016 election, it was Pennsylvania in the Electoral College that put uh, President Trump over the top. And if you delay a state like Pennsylvania, a key swing state, in terms of the results for days or weeks, Bush versus Gore is going to seem like a walk in the park compared to what may happen in the courts and otherwise after that. Oh, boy. Uh, hanging, dimpled, and pregnant chads all over again. Uh, here we go. Uh, but, Jason, we've been into this pandemic here for six months now. Um, many are wondering, will we ever go back to the way it was, whether it's school, sports, or even church? Um, you're urging church leaders on your website today to stay the course, to not get completely complacent. We've seen a few COVID clusters connected to church, but overall, how do you think churches are doing at uh, preventing the spread of this virus? Well, you know, our organization is just as frustrated as many people across the state with the restrictions that continue to be on us. And yet we are urging vigilance uh, for a number of reasons. A couple of weeks ago, we did see that there were some COVID clusters that broke out in three different churches across the state. And while there could also be clusters in other locations, whenever it happens in a church, uh, it's problematic for a testimony perspective, for government control. Nobody wants their church contact traced. And frankly, with schools reopening, we want to make sure that we stay the course so that we we are doing all we can to get back to some sense of normal as soon as we can. Mm. Governor Wolf, uh, this week, Michael, announcing that starting on September 21st, restaurants can operate at 50% capacity. Is this too little too late? Um, we're hearing uh, that as many as 70% of restaurants that were shut down may never reopen. Yeah, I think it may be. And that points out the challenge of sort of these emergency declarations that allow a single person, in this case in Pennsylvania, a governor, 
to sort of decree and change laws and requirements that businesses and individuals have to meet on a sort of willy-nilly basis. I mean, how can any business plan for the future if they don't know that uh, the governor or this person making these edicts has the ability to change the ground rules of how they operate going forward? It's a major challenge, and I think there will be many, many businesses, and that means many, many jobs that are going to be lost as a result. Yeah, one of the trends from this virus has been a a sharp uptick that we have seen in homeschooling. Given all of the uncertainty right now as to what will happen with schools if they get COVID clusters, will the whole thing shut down? You've got the hybrid learning, the problems with technology, with the remote learning. So a lot of parents are just saying, hey, we're just going to homeschool now. Jason, what advice are you giving moms and dads who are kind of walking that fine line right now about whether or not to uh, continue with public or private school or whether they are going to homeschool their kids this year? Well, that is one of the silver linings of this whole uh, COVID crisis has been the fact that parents are looking at school choice in a whole new way. And so whether it be a private Christian school or it be a, a homeschool situation, parents are recognizing that they have control over their children's education. Yeah. The vice president was in Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh area area this week, Michael. And this is personal for you because your wife, Susan, instrumental in a pregnancy care center in the Pittsburgh area, that that same center was where the vice president was this week. And she actually had an opportunity to be part of that roundtable discussion. Give our audience a little update about what that day was all about. It was really exciting. The vice president uh, with the Susan B. Anthony list highlighted the Women's Choice Network Pregnancy Care Center, which back in 1985, my wife and I helped found. Uh, it opened on Mother's Day of 1985. At that time, it was called the North Pittsburgh Crisis Pregnancy Center. It expanded to now three centers throughout the Pittsburgh area. And it was just gratifying. I was there as well uh, to see the vice president highlight the work of pregnancy care centers. He did the same in Florida and in North Carolina. These are centers, and many of your listeners know about them and probably support them throughout New York and Pennsylvania, that provide help for women who are abortion-minded and considering whether to choose life. And to have these centers out there and to have the vice president to promote centers like the Women's Choice Network there in Pittsburgh was really gratifying to see. Awesome. What an opportunity that was. Uh, And uh, again, uh, Jason, unfortunately, uh, the racial unrest, it just continues, and now it's hit close to home. Rochester, New York is the new epicenter of this ongoing conversation. Such a political hot potato right now. Do you support the Attorney General Letitia James investigation into the death of Daniel Prude? And uh, talk about the Christian response here to this issue, racial justice, law and order, police brutality, however you want to frame it. There are so many moving parts to this story. Yeah, first to the first question you asked, I I do support the investigation from uh, New York's Attorney General. I only wonder why it took so long. Regarding the larger issue, though, I I think there's, as you mentioned, so many, many moving parts. I mean, there's a mental health component to this. There's, uh, you know, some drug and alcohol abuse that appears. There's, you know, police situations, all sorts of things. Ultimately, though, I think from my position, I'm really trying to continue to listen. Some of what I am hearing from the protests, I cannot support. I do not support. But there are other voices that I think are trying to speak from the church in Rochester, a reasoned, rational um, conversation in this. And those are voices that can come along the side and say, help me better understand. Yeah. I'm willing to accept that I do not see everything from my perspective. But at the same time, that does not mean that the other perspective is always 100% correct. Somewhere in the middle, there has to be a place for us to come and reason together. Amen. And in the midst of the social unrest, Michael, and the pandemic, yeah, why not talk marijuana? <laughs> Let's throw that into the mix. Marijuana legalization, yeah. why not? Uh, so many are saying Governor Wolf is just tone deaf on this one. Uh, when you think about uh, the drug addiction, the isolation problems caused by this pandemic, now he's on record pushing for the legislature to make this a top priority this fall. Absolutely. I mean, this is the same governor that has declared 11 times in a row emergency declarations related to the opioid crisis in Pennsylvania. And yet for the dollar signs, this is what he was talking about. We can raise a lot of revenue if we legalize recreational marijuana. Uh, He's ignoring the harm and damage that comes to a society that does it. It's it's a bad idea across the board. And uh, we have a website, truthonweed.com, 
that has a lot of detail about the damaging effects that can come with legalization of marijuana. All right. And uh, speaking of websites, there's a couple other we want to mention before we go here. If you have questions about all the weighty issues coming out of Albany these days, uh, Jason, where can they find you? AlbanyUpdate.com. Stay informed as well on the issues impacting you and your family in Pennsylvania. Michael, what's your site, sir? PAFamily.org.